every single year, every single year, we continue to see first round picks at the quarterback position in particular flame out in spectacular fashion every single year. We're talking Josh Rosen, Jamarcus Russell, Blaine Gabbert, Jake Lockard, EJ Manuel, Christian Ponder, the names go on and on and on and on and on every year. Because the quarterback position is the most difficult position to project and get right for NFL teams like real football, as well as fantasy. And despite the fact that we have epic flameouts every single damn year, we continue to draft these quarterbacks extremely high in our dynasty drafts, in our startups, in our rookie drafts, in case we are to land the next Patrick Mahomes or Deshaun Watson or Justin Herbert. We do it. We do it even though we know it's a it's a risky proposition. We know that. And make no mistake, the quarterback that we will be discussing today is not going to be the next Patrick Mahomes. He's not the next Aaron Rodgers. He's not the next Deshaun Watson. He's not the next Justin Herbert. Hell, he's not even the next Joe Burrow. But what he is, is a fantastic looking quarterback prospect that will have value for your fantasy teams in super flex and two quarterback formats. There are only a handful of elite, great, game-changing, fantasy-winning quarterbacks in the NFL. However, players like Alabama quarterback Mac Jones provide tremendous value as low-end quarterback one potential QBs or high-end quarterback twos. And in super flex formats, we need that. And I'm here to tell you, based on everything that Mac Jones put on tape in 2020, and if you go back to his brief stint as the starter in 2019 if he was not built like hank hill if he was a four or five star recruit and if his last name were tongue of we would be talking about mac jones as a top five pick in the 2021 nfl draft you got barbecue back there and you didn't invite me hurt my feelings Welcome back to the station, good people. This is Destination Debbie, and y'all know who it is, man. It's your host, Ray G. You can find me on Twitter at Ray GQ. Make sure you're following the show at Destination Debbie as well. And we continue our 2021 Ricky Profile Series with our first feature at the quarterback position, Alabama Signal Caller, the Consensus All-American, Davey Award-winning quarterback, Johnny Unitas Award-winning quarterback, Heisman Trophy finalist, one of the greatest quarterbacks in Alabama Crimson Tide history, Mac Jones, baby, Mac Jones. Now understand, I'm not saying he's one of the greatest quarterbacks in college football history, but what he did in 2020, it's almost a perfect season. I I don't know how it gets any better than what Mac Jones was able to do in this COVID-shortened, all-SEC schedule, losing two first-round picks at the wide receiver position to do what he did it, it, it's a perfect season played by Mac Jones from start to finish, winning the national championship game in spectacular fashion, crushing the Ohio State Buckeyes. Now, who is Mac Jones? Well, there's not a lot to talk about here because he was not a highly touted recruit. Uh, he wasn't some stud athlete coming out of high school that was guaranteed a job as a true freshman. No, no, no. Mac Jones was a three-star recruit. Barely a top 400 player, according to 24-7 Sports. Goes to Alabama and plays on the scout team his whole damn freshman season. Because at that time, Alabama did have quarterback Jalen Hurts, the starting quarterback right now, the Philadelphia Eagles, as well as Tua Tungvaloa, starting quarterback of the Miami Dolphins. So, Mac Jones had to buy his time, was not highly touted, wasn't some freshman that came in to play, didn't do much of anything besides a couple of throws in his true freshman season. But... When you look at what he did as a sophomore, that should have told us right then and there that there was something there. There was something there. Did Would we have ever anticipated that something being what he did in 2020? Probably not. Hell, I didn't see it. But in 2019, in relief of Tua, because Tua, Tua hurt his hip versus Mississippi State, fra- fractured his hip, broke his nose on a play, and in, sir, in steps Mac Jones. Mac Jones comes in, throws for 1,500 yards, 14 touchdowns, three interceptions, completing 69% of his passes in relief of Tua as a true sophomore. Now, what's interesting about this is I was on record. 
I was on record coming into the season saying that the highly touted Bryce Young five-star recruit would take over and be the starting quarterback of Alabama in 2020 at some point. And that ain't even come close to happening. Not even close. Mac Jones in 2020, a season of the ages, a record setting season, what he did at Alabama, 4,500 passing yards on the dot, 41 touchdowns to four interceptions, 77% completion percentage, ridiculous. In the history of Alabama Crimson Tide football, there have been 11 400 yard pass performances in a game. Mac Jones holds five of those games, and he did that in 2020 alone. In 2020, he set the NCAA passer efficiency rating mark with 203.6, besting Joe Burrow, the previous record holder in 2019's 201.96 that he did in that record-setting LSU season. So a better passing efficiency season than Joe Burrow, who's the number one pick to the Cincinnati Bengals. His completion percentage of 77.8, Best all-time in college football history, beating Colt McCoy's record of like 76 point something in 2008 for the Texas Longhorns. So setting Alabama records, national records for passer efficiency, completion percentage, just, I mean, when he threw the ball, it was it was a completion. Now, a lot of people look at Mac Jones and they think, ah, he's probably a product of the Alabama system. You know, he's got all these players, all these receivers. He didn't do this. He didn't do that. Well, according to PFF, uh, you're wrong, right? His adjusted completion percentage, which accounts for those those pass incompletions where it's like spikes at the end of the game, throwaways, drop passes, things of that nature, right? Batted balls, takes into account all of that stuff to give you an accurate adjusted completion percentage. He was top in the country. Number one with 84.2% adjusted completion percentage, better than Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Justin Fields, everybody. Number one in the country, right? And for those that think Mac Jones is just some check down Charlie, incorrect once again, as he led the country in passes, going 20 plus yards downfield. He had more yards than every other player in the country. 17 touchdowns, two interceptions, over 1,300 of his passing yards came down the field. One of the nation's leaders in pass attempts, uh, yards per pass attempt. Every efficiency metric you can think of, Mac Jones hit and or exceeded that so for those people who just think he's some check down charlie you're wrong get your facts together get your stuff straight because he's more than that he pushes the ball downfield and again i'll just go back to this if he didn't have this horrible dad bod and i know we've all seen the picture of him after the national championship game with his shirt off if he was built more physically, if he had a better build, we'd be talking about Mac Jones in a better light than we are right now, right? And then this whole Alabama narrative that he was only good because it's Alabama, it, you guys can't have it both ways. You cannot have it both ways. Last year, when Tua was throwing to Devonta Smith and a healthy Jalen Waddle and a healthy Henry Ruggs and a healthy Jerry Judy, and he had Najee Harris in the backfield, Nobody was saying any of that about Tua. Nobody. Tua, up until the time he got hurt, the debate was whose quarterback won, him or Joe Burrow. Now that it's Mac Jones, insert Mac Jones, who had Jalen Waddle for four games. Four games. He was hurt in the fifth game versus Tennessee, comes back limping around versus Ohio State. He had a healthy Jalen Waddle for four games. And Devonta Smith and Najee Harris. He was throwing to Slade Bolden, who will be a day three pick. John Mechie, who's probably a day two pick. Jaleel Billingsley, probably a day two pick. And who else? That was it. That was it. So we can't sit here and talk about how great Tua was when he had three, four first round pick wide receivers on that offense for an entire season completely healthy and a first round running back in Najee Harris. Mac Jones loses two of those wide, three of the wide receivers, and he continues to just best everything that Tua ever did. Like we can't. You can't have it both ways. Stop taking away from how good Mac Jones was. And when you look at what he does well, accuracy, decision-making, pocket mobility. You're not going to get him confused with a dual-threat quarterback, but the way that he can maneuver the pocket, get himself in position to find the window and deliver an accurate ball, does that extremely well. Pushing the ball downfield accurately. Mac Jones, very, very, very good in that category. So when you're looking at what a quarterback does well, don't turn the ball over, throw the ball accurately, push it downfield, operate an offense to the highest ability. Mac Jones does all of those things. The, what he doesn't do well, right? 
We know he's not a dual threat quarterback. He's not going to beat anybody on the ground. He's not running around for four or 500 yards a season. He's not going to do that. And he also just doesn't have a cannon of an arm. He's got more than enough arm strength to push the ball downfield, but he doesn't have a cannon. Oh, well, doesn't matter. I want you to be able to deliver the ball accurately and not turn it over. And Mac Jones can do all of those things extremely well. And when I'm looking at a play style comparison for a player like Mac Jones, I was on record of saying a better version of Jimmy Garoppolo, a better version of Kirk Cousins, but he really reminds me of Hall of Fame quarterback Phillip Rivers. He delivers the ball accurately, pushes the ball downfield like fearless Phil Rivers. That's what he does. And Mac Jones has no problem doing that. He's got that cocky, confident swagger to his game that you want to see out of your quarterback, right? You want to see that demeanor. He doesn't turn the ball over. I love it. Reminds me of a young Phillip Rivers. And when I'm thinking about where Mac Jones could fit, what teams could I see him going to to make an impact? Well, right away at eight. Carolina Panthers, Matt Rule, Joe Brady just came from the college game. Joe Brady playing in the SEC. I'm sure he knows a lot about Mac Jones. College quarterbacks, they had him at the Senior Bowl. The Panthers owner was there. The coaches were there. They got to see Mac Jones front and center. And if the first three picks of the draft go Lawrence Wilson, Justin Fields, the first three quarterbacks off of the board, I can see Carolina taking a stab at Mac Jones. And I think that would be great for us in fantasy, great for DJ Moore, great for Christian McCaffrey, Robbie Anderson, whoever else is catching passes. You also look at a team, Kyle Shanahan and the San Francisco 49ers. Maybe they do take a quarterback if they don't trade up. Whether that's Lance, I think Mac Jones would be a good fit with Kyle Shanahan. The Denver Broncos. Drew Locke ain't it. They need a quarterback. Mac Jones would fit a need. But if I were putting my chips on the table, putting it all out there, who does Mac Jones seem like he's just destined to be a part of? It's the New England Patriots. The connection of Bill Belichick and Nick Saban make a ton of sense. Mac Jones, pro-style quarterback, running an offense efficiently. They find the heir apparent to Tom Brady. They draft Mac Jones, and that helps out that New England franchise. I think any of those landing spots would be fantastic for Mac Jones. And what I challenge and ask you to do, instead of just looking and hearing the name Mac Jones, it's boring, uh, don't really want him, go dive into what he did well. Look at the tape. Look at the numbers. Mac Jones, I'm telling you, if he wasn't built like Hank freaking Hill, he was a highly touted recruit, wore a headband and took two girls to prom, we'd be talking about him as a top two, three pick in this 2021 NFL draft. And when you're talking about where he's going in super flex formats over on the Patreon, Destination Debbie, all, patreon.com forward slash all gas. We're running mock drafts. We got ADP collected weekly. He's going at the top of the second round in super flex formats. Listen. Call it what you want. I'd rather pass on Zach Wilson at two or three in my fantasy draft, take a Najee Harris, Jamar Chase, or Devonta Smith, and then grab Mac Jones at the top of the second. I'd be be much happier with that rookie draft if that were me drafting from my dynasty teams. And I just ask you to challenge yourself. Open your mind and think about this outside of all the all the the echo chamber talk that you see people talking about because he's not fast, because he's not Lamar Jackson. Listen, everybody wants Lamar Jackson and Jalen Hurts and pre-2020 Josh Allen so they can't hit the broad side of the barn, throw five incompletions and two interceptions, and now you're ready for a quarterback that can actually deliver and throw balls from the pocket. That's when you'll be wanting Mac Jones. I think he's a rock-solid top 15 type quarterback in fantasy football you know, in the future. Maybe not this year in 2021, but in 2022, I definitely see him being a high-end quarterback two, low-end quarterback one for fantasy football. I appreciate y'all dropping by, checking in. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Sub, sub, sub. And if you want to be a part of the best damn Debbie Dynasty community in fantasy football, patreon.com forward slash all gas. Dropping heat every single week. Sign up, log in, stay tapped in, baby. I'll be back. More content coming soon. I'm out of this thing. Peace.